Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY23 earnings conference call of Zelpmonk Design and Tech Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing start and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ravi Udeshi. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Rutuja. Good evening to all of you. Welcome to the Q1 FY23 earnings conference call of Zelpmock Design and Tech Limited. We have sent you the press release and the investor presentation and the same has also been uploaded on the website as well as on the stock exchanges. In case even anyone does not have a copy of the same, please do write to us. To discuss the results and the outlook for the future going forward, we have with us today the top management of Zelpmock, represented by Mr. Sandeepan Chattopadhyay, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Sunia Kura, CFO, Mr. Madhu Kumalil, Group President, Strategic Initiatives, and Mr. Srinivas Kolipara, Group President, Startup Ventures. Before we start the call, I would just like to remind you that the safe harbor clause applies. With that said, I would now hand, like to hand it over the call to Mr. Srinivas Kura. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ravi. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Zelfmark Learning Call for Q1 FY23. I hope you and your family are doing well. I'm pleased to inform that we have maintained our business momentum while focusing on sustainability of our patients. We continue to move ahead with our execution plan, which is centered on identifying the target sector that corresponds with our skill approach. Operating revenue for the quarter was INR 42.1 million as compared to INR 32.5 million in Q1 FY22 and INR 18.6 million in Q4 FY22. We saw a renewed interest from our clients, which leads to a sequential revenue increase of about 72.8%. Operating EBITDA adjusted for ESOP for the quarter was INR 20, uh, negative 20.1 million as compared to INR 5.3 million in Q1 FY22. And INR negative 44.2 million in Q4 of FY22. I would like to give a contest to the said EBITDA loss compared to Q1 FY22. We have seen the demand for onboarding and manpower talent, especially in the new technology skills has increased drastically across the IT sector resulting in dramatic increase in manpower onboarding and retention cost. Also, we incur certain other travel and project-based expenses in line with our business expansion plan, which is expected to recover in the future through increased revenues. The net loss for the quarter was INR 39.4 million, partially due to INR 20.1 million of ESOP expenditure, this is in comparison to a net loss of INR 49.5 million in Q4 FY22 and a net loss of INR 15.3 million in Q1 FY22. Regarding the change in revenue, we would like to state that our revenue stream was diversified with corporate, government, and startup, forming 40%, 31%, and 29% respectively of our Q1 FY23 revenue. We expect that our three-pronged focus on corporates, government, and startup will enable us to sustain the recent increase in the revenue momentum in future also. Our team size is one, uh, one or five, including employees, interns, and consultants, as compared to 91 in Q4 FY22. Till date, we have served 55 clients, and our sustained interaction with the clients is the foundation for our good performance. The fair value of our investment in portfolio companies stood at approximately INR 630.9 million as on 38 June 2020, as compared to INR 475.3 million on 38 June 2021. Our portfolio companies did well by embracing new opportunities. We hope, we hope virtual interactive analyst VIA has recently added a performance management model thereby becoming a fully serviced product 
for all the stakeholders. It has also added capabilities, <coughs> including real-time analysis and real-time agent assistance, enabling a prompt customer assistance. Google. Google is a video commerce platform for me in tiers two, three, four, and down, driven by creator community. Users at Google discover and shop lifestyle products instantly via short video content created by micro and nano influencers. Google has seven million registered users, which has grown more than two hundred percent in quarter on quarter basis. It has more than thirty thousand influencers. Who have created 1.2 million short video content around brands and products, which works as a video catalyst for the audience. It has a GMV ARR of USD 10.3 million, which is growing at 25% on a monthly basis. A substantial portion of this has translated into revenue, and is seeing a good traction in the coming quarters. The other portfolio company, the star in me, TSIM. Is a global career advancement platform for women and a diversity partner for organizations. TSM is one of the 75 startups to be recognized by Department of Science and Technology during the 75th year of Indian independence. It continues to witness an increase in adoption rates and has signed a large global corporate as its client. Plate. Slate has successfully tested few use cases for a higher volume business. Its products have seen increased market acceptance and is now on track for a greater revenue trajectory. Snapunt. Snapunt is a Singapore-based venture that focuses on Southeast Asian talent market with a proprietary matching algorithm and matches candidates to prospective employers by leveraging over 20 years of human resource experience. Snapper aims to provide an enterprise class recruiting solution that enables the candidates to express themselves. Snapper has onboarded 10,000 plus employers to million job posting across over 50 countries. It is looking to expand organically over the next few quarters. The board has approved investment in securities of First Sense Technologies Private Limited. First Sense is into video analytics. Zelmok will subscribe to the compulsory convertible to screen shares in first sense by September 2022. Zelmok has been recently awarded a contract by Madhya Pradesh State Tourism Development Corporation Limited, MPS TDC, wherein, as per the terms of the agreement entered with MPS TDC, the company will provide design, development, and maintenance of online travel data services under the SPV structure for MPS TDC. The board has approved formation of the proposed SPV to be engaged in the business of tourism with the help of technology to be developed related, relating to the travel and tourism sector. The proposed SPV is Experience India Private Limited, which will be incorporated by September 2022. And Zelmok will hold 43% of the proposed SPV for subscription of shares. Coming to our subsidiaries, Signal Analytics Private Limited. A majority owned subsidiary of the company has invested in Soul Track Studios Private Limited, which is engaged in content creation. Signal now holds 54.57% in Soul Track. Both the businesses are expected to work together and develop synergies. Our board has approved investment into accelerated learning edited private limited to the extent of 14% on fully diluted basis. 3% is issued as a cash concentration, and the balance is for the advisory services. ALEPL runs School of Accelerated Learning, the brand name is Soul, and upscaling startups that designs and run cohort-based courses which help students kickstart their career in engineering and design irrespective of their background. Soul has started a mentorship program for learners in job search where students represent find and share more job opportunities with the soul learners and alumni community. Soul platform Delta enables learners to track their learning and content learning with the mentor and prospective recruiters. It has signed up a leading government education institute to launch and promote program to boost the tech talent ecosystem within the said institute's catchment hub. 
It has planned to launch user-friendly platform and a program which will enable greater traction in the revenue going forward. Zelp Mock UK. We have identified the senior management to lead the UK operations. Once Zelp Mock has the UK employment sponsored license in place, then we expect to onboard key personnel with the relevant skills and the experience. Zelp Mock USA. The board has approved investment in Zelpmok Design and Tech IMC USA. Zelpmok has proposed to acquire 60% of Zelpmok USA's capital. The main object of the said acquisition is to enter into the US market to provide technology solutions to startups and corporates. Now let me come to the outlook for the fiscal 2023. We see this year promising growth in our portfolio companies, given that they are focusing on unaddressed areas of the economy. We expect our investments, including in Nuhu, Publi, and Signal, to expand their access and reach, the, reach and enter the next generation of the world. Our dual focus on our startups as well as our service segments make us fairly confident of adjusted EBITDA level profitable by Q4 FY20. Before we open the floor for question and answers, we would like to respond to one query which a couple of analysts have raised uh, in our previous calls with respect to reporting of the number of imports. We have revisited this particular request and we had discussed with our advisors, but as extract of Schedule 3 of the Companies Act has prescribed the rounding of guidance, uh, guidance and accordingly and consistently we are following that. With now, I request Ravi to open the floor for question and answer. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to dial to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Neera Stakar from Profit Tantak Financial Services. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, can you hear me, sir? Hello. Can hear you, sir? Yeah, thank you so much for taking my question. Sir, my one basic question is this, sir. Uh, since we are investing in so many uh, startups and so many companies and we give our services to them, I just want to understand, like, uh, once they mature all these companies and what we plan, like how do we exit We exit in part or when we say offload our stake. So uh, still we provide them services and then whatever uh, amount or consideration we receive, we intend to invest in some other startups. Uh, what is our thought processor in this? Yeah, we have often answered this question. Uh, you yes. can corroborate this with the past times I've answered it. The main thing is that most of these are not at a vintage where we were thinking of exits. Some of them are coming there. We had thought they will take a five to seven year time frame for each of them. Uh, we are reaching those thresholds and now we'll start thinking. One thing is that clear is that any proceeds that come from uh, these things will obviously go through a board deliberation. But prima facie, since we are for growth, at least at this stage, and we are looking at a kind of formation parts of getting our legacy on, I think for the coming viewable and immediate future, we would think of reinvesting more proactively than for, you know, doing any other means for it or anything like that. Correct. And sir, I have one more question, sir. Thank you so much. I have one more question. Sir, I see this, uh, when we invest in like, for example, uh, US company, we have invested in Zelpmok Design and Tech. So we get some uh, portion of uh, share. Uh, what is the who will be holding the balance uh, this one, sir? Because it's a subsidiary, correct? So 60% is held by us. Yes. Uh, balance 40%. Who will be holding, sir? Correct. Well, balance 40% in the case of US subsidiary is with one of the partners who has the ability of attracting the startup ecosystem and the services industry. Okay. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's all. We've been working with them for and getting some US projects, so we are exploiting that and trying to expand the relationship. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mr. Desai, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. <clears throat> Sir, I wanted to understand, uh, since we have uh, subscribed to more CCPS from the first sense technology, uh, was this part of the earlier range arrangement which is uh, uh, time bound or it's a fresh acquisition call we have taken uh, now? So, as far as this is concerned, this investment is close to about 25 lakhs, which is a fresh acquisition which we are taking in form of uh, a CCPS. So, any specific rationale for increasing our holding into this? Are we seeing some positive developments on the basis of which we are looking to increase our share holding? Yes, we are. We are, we are seeing some uh, positive traction. That's the reason why we are investing, and there's a high likelihood, high possibility that with us there are other couple of uh, two investors who will also be participating in this particular round. Understood, sir. But uh, not an institutional round, right? This will still be a angel investor sort of round. Uh, it's not an institutional, or we can say a family office or an institution. Got okay, okay, sir. And if you could, sir, uh, help us with our arrange uh, the services contract we have got with uh, MP government. And the SPV. So, what's the revenue model? It's it's a retainer-based services fee or completion-based uh, uh, tenure. How, what's the contracting nature? So, let me take that. Uh, see, it's a it's a structure by which two arrangements have been made. We are equity holders in SPV, which will mushroom like a startup. But instead of a normal startup, it is being seeded with the backing of a tourism department of a state which is held in high esteem. As mm -hmm. part of that arrangement, we are essentially doing the sole technology suppliers for running all the properties of Madhya Pradesh tourism, but is a deliverable of the project, right? Now extending that to any other person as a SaaS service for the tourism industry in that state, or anywhere in India, is going to be the natural next step. Understood, sir. So, from a monetization perspective, there will be a service revenue, but we'll still uh, be able to monetize our equity or participation at a later date if needed. There will be there will be several revenues streams which we are looking at it, and as the plans get cemented, we will keep you apprised on that part. But remember, this is not just about servicing MPs' captive uh, properties only. It's also about creating a tourism ecosystem and getting into a kind of an online aggregator with a different perspective of how travel has changed in the new perspective of the world. Understood, sir. Understood, sir. And, and sir, in terms of, uh, so last question from my side, uh, in terms of our U.S. subsidiary, right, because uh, one, it's a very different and mature market, any specific areas we have identified we want to focus on, or it will be very similar to what we are doing in India? No, no. See, in U.S., obviously, uh, our teams and all will be not very applicable, but the kind of things we have been doing already in the U.S. and U.K. markets are essentially based on our data science capabilities and modern tech, which obviously, you know, happens a bit earlier in U.S. and U.K. markets, for example, working on blockchain, not necessarily crypto, or working on processes and all. We have already been working with some of these parts. We think there is a huge amount of uh, talent shortfall and our core skills are matching and that's the reason this is an opportune moment. We had thought of first fostering the UK thing, steady fastly growing it and then looking at other markets, but US presented itself as something which is getting serious uh, traction and we thought it's best to instrumentalize it with the partner there. We cannot obviously have the bandwidth to manage both the geographies at this moment of time. The partner being there, we thought might as well get through this structure. Perfect. And it will be, it will again be a combination of startup investments plus services, right? Very similar to what is. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, whatever we do in US, we will do through that vehicle. Uh, a lot of it is services, but many of the services were at startups without an equity part to it. We may try to get the equity part also to it, right? So both the services are being done both to corporates uh, and to startups there. And actually, a lot, three, four startups have already done there. But we were not taking equity in those. We may look at equity from now on 
as a little subsidized rate for profitability. Sure, sure, sir. Thank, thank you so much, sir. I'll come back in with you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Sahib Sudhish, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, hello, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I got three questions. Uh, recently, uh, FB or Meta has shut down, uh, shut down its uh, video commerce business. Without, with that background, uh, how do we see uh, will we business evolve? I guess the uh, main thing that you have to understand is each business is unique and has its own sweet spot. Uh, Woobly is mainly doing creator economy for kind of an influencer marketing. And this is for uh, class B, class C, target audiences and exposure to brands which are not exactly well popularated. So I think it's a win-win situation for their target audience perspective and it seems to be working for now. Now, a particular sectoral uh, uh, trend may not always be applicable to all players in the sector. We do believe that Ubli is hugely differentiated from the others who are uh, who have tried something which was mostly on uh, video content itself without any end monetizability. Whereas here, we started with the monetizability and then looked at video as a medium. So the approach was very different. Okay. Uh, and my second question is, London as well as US are crowded uh, when it comes to VC and angel investment. So do you think we will be able to stamp our mark in that region? I always believe that if your business is doing the right things, funding will always come. So yes, from the initial profilization and all, there would be a lot of noise all around and all. But what really matters is how the business is shaping up. And from that perspective, we always have gone for things we believed in from a business, not just from the hype cycle. And hence, we have additional comfort and confidence that, yes, we would never have that part. But again, the idea is not to rely on funding as the only source for a startup. A startup at the end of it is a business. So we look at what are going to be profitable elements and what would be there. Yes, for growth and for initial setup, we may look at funding. But the idea is not to just see what is the next funding cycle itself. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, and my next question is, uh, see, most of the startup based out of India uh, make products for us, for India, and not for the world, uh, which reduces our TAM as well as SAM. So what's your thought on that? Do, when we fund any of the startup, do we say that, do we guide them to make products for the world or how is it? Uh, what you define by the world is the perspective factor. We have always very clearly said that we think of uh, the next 500 million Indians, which translates to about another 3.2 billion world citizens. So solutions that work in India, I'm not thinking of cash-rich places like USA and Europe to go to. Maybe some of them will still find its way. But surely uh, opportunities in Africa, Indonesia, and other places are not something we're overlooking either. So we do hope that it is going to be internationalized, but not necessarily in the geographies people commonly think with internationalization. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that's it. I will come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ram Kumar Arkan, individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. I have observed that uh, the working capital requirement is increasing uh, after each quarter is passing by. Though we achieved uh, EBITDA positive in a few a uh, couple of years back, and we were given a guidance of you know double digit EBITDA in the coming years, but probably due to the COVID, and we can understand as investors, we definitely understand the, the sudden uh, you know uh, issues we face. However, the, I just wanted to bring to your highlight that we only have 3.1 crore left from the IPO money that we, you know, seeded. And this quarter alone, we spent 3.38 crores out of this IPO money for working capital requirement. And our the, the sales growth is also stagnant on a year-on-year -year basis for the last couple of years. 
uh, though it is not a concern, but I wanted to just uh, to see that uh, during this today's conference call, uh, there was a guidance given that uh, we will see sequential growth going forward as well. So can we expect this 70-70% uh, plus sequential growth in the, in, uh, from now on? Is it, is it something realistically can we expect? So basically, just to answer your query, uh, as far as the IPO money is concerned, 3.1 crores, yes, you are right, the proceeds, the working capital which is available from the proceeds, what is available from uh, IPO is about 3.1 crores, but uh, uh, subsequently we also raised a follow-on round of funding through our preferential allotment. So in case, if you look at cash and cash equivalent as of 30th June, it is about 33.53 crores. And as you said in our previous uh, calls, that with FX from Q1, we would be focusing on services which we have started. In case, if you look at last three to four quarters, what we were doing, we were focusing on, again, startups. That's the reason why where you have seen, like, we have started Signal and also Soul Tracks, which has become part of the Signal, and Soul Tracks already started generating revenue. We are very happy that in the first quarter, they, uh, they have generated 14 lakhs of revenue in the span of about 45 days and we see that at least growing in a double digit now as far as coming to Wellmark, we are very sure that the revenue would be on the upward trend going forward for these next three quarters and we are looking at reaching a adjusted EBITDA to be a break even uh, by Q4 of this financial year. So thank, thank you this is a bit encouraging and I have one request this corporate government startup split of 40, 31 and 29 uh, if you could, from the coming quarter onwards, if you could also give us the bottom line of the, these three segments, like bottom line as well, like how much is the, how much percentage of it, it is, so that we come to know performance of each, uh, you know, corporate, government, and startup EBITDA separately, so we get an idea about how, how top line as well as bottom line is performing. Would that be possible? I would appreciate if you can consider that. No, we will. Something that we would look at, but probably not immediately because a lot of it is common components and all, and then segregating those and having it attributed properly may be a difficult thing, especially with products coming in very soon. So for some time, we may go with it, but broadly, the sectors of business and all, the way we talked about today, we will do it. Maybe not at the EBITDA level. Okay, it's okay, sir. And this DocuX and XERP are the two main products I can understand that we are trying to sell to our clients going forward. There but, are a there are a couple, but we have been using them and all. And as I have said that from the third quarter of this financial year, which is uh, from that, we will be revisiting how to take a go-to-market strategy and which products to focus on. For the moment, we are focused on the services part and setting up those pipelines. Like Srini explained, I want to reassert and sort of at the cost of being repetitive, please understand that depending on the situation and the market hunger and the kind of availability of resources, we do will recalibrate strategy. So yes, we were on the uh, TikTok track for getting into profitability and all, but then we realized that the real value of ours comes from the kind of startups that we are getting onto our portfolio. Focusing on that and starting the overseas operations seems to be important. So the fund was raised specifically with that intent. So we took a breather from going ahead with those numbers and trying to build our foundations for value creation and wealth creation. And then we will look at the margin creation, which we are focusing on right Okay, now. perfect, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neeraj Kumar from Chevron Shipping. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, hi, good evening. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, very good. Yes, you are good. Yeah, I, I, actually, I, I got the answer in the last question. Like, you know, means I wanted to ask when you think, like, uh, you will be break even, like, you know, at least you are not losing money every time in the bottom line. Thank you. Yeah. And we hope to be in sooner than what we are saying, but yeah, we have a strategy for getting to that level pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Anantu, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Um, question regarding uh, the UK subsidiary. Last con call, you did mention that uh, the uh, you are already executing projects, you know, well for UK clients. So, can you provide insights, you know, on the contracts, you know, in terms of 
what is the aggregate value of the contracts, you know, and <clears throat> what, what are the payment milestones like? <clears throat> is it, you know, where you're going to get paid, you know, at the end of, you know, the project or you're going to get, you know, the payment milestones spread, you know, across the life cycle of the project, you know, and the duration of these projects, you know, is it six months, one year, two years? Could you please uh, provide more insights on the UK subsidy and what's happening there? So uh, just to answer your query, commercial side will be taking and uh, the tech part, Sandeep would be answering. So as far as, this con yeah. as far as these contracts are concerned, we are right now entering directly in the name of Wellbox to the Indian entity. And out of the revenue, whatever we have generated, close to about 42% of our revenues were from the uh, uh, overseas and 57 to 58% of the revenue coming from India. Now, as far as these payment terms are concerned, the payment terms are pretty standard, like whatever we do for India. On sign up, you have X percentage. On reaching the milestones, you have Y percentage. So we, we, we follow the same standards for US and UK. Madhu, you want to touch on what is happening on the UK as a strategy? Hello? I think Madhu is not audible. Okay, so let me just quickly add to what Sreeni has said. So there are different stages of maturity relationships have been formed with some of our customers, right? So in some projects, and I'm, I'm not going to differentiate between the US and UK, uh, we have delivered the first version. Some of them have gone into kind of a BAU stage, business as usual stage, and there a kind of a fixed fee model has been worked on on a monthly basis. And there is no end date to the contract as such. It can be closed on a mutual fund. Most of the contracts do start off with a particular solution in mind. But what has been interesting is that our quality of work and the deliverables that we have delivered has helped us foster long-term relationships. Maybe there has been a gap of seven, eight months, but those many of those customers have come back for repeat businesses. And in the second business and all, the value has actually been higher than the first business in many cases. So we are still formulating a strategy which is particular to suit that demographic. Like in India, we have cracked and we, we know some of the projects are going to be short-term. Some of the projects we're looking for are kind of a multi-year contracts. We have, we have a portfolio in mind and we are now gunning for getting those projects. UK and all, we are still feeling our way around, understanding and maturing as we go and letting it evolve into the natural part. And sir, <clears throat> I have a question regarding, you know, the value of uh, uh, the contract itself. So, you know, Srini uh, just mentioned that, you know, 42% of this quarter's revenue is from overseas, right? So, which is round about, you know, uh, one and a half crores. Don't you think that, you know, this one and a half crores of 150k pounds, you know, uh, is is uh, is relatively less, you know, for a company of our size, you know? Well, 150k with the initial startup and with no real focus, I still and monthly, I would not say it's completely, you know. Uh, there and that also from irregular business. But the whole idea is that obviously it has to be much more and there is monetizability there which has to work. But I, I by no means think that 150k at this stage of our propagation is insignificant. So is it gonna, you know, stay, you know, in that range, you know, for this year or what are our plans, you know, uh, because we intend to invest around 28 crores, you know, um, if, if needed, yeah, for the UK subsidiary, right? Sorry? So is it, so what I'm trying to ask is, you know, we intend to invest 28 crores around, yeah, if needed, for a UK subsidiary for scaling up, right? So if this revenue run rate, you know, from UK subsidiary is, is, is what you envisage for this year? Just to correct, like 28 crores or 27 crores, whatever we have raised, the 100% amount is not for the UK investment. UK yeah. investment, we would be contributing initially. And then we will be following the same strategy what we are doing in, in India. And as far as UK or US is concerned, still we are pursuing startups. We are not pursuing corporates. That's the reason why you are seeing the revenues on the lower side. And here we are working more on the solution. 
Okay, but I guess you know uh, you have plans to uh, you know ramp you know these revenue figures up you know over the over the coming quarters, right? Yeah, that we would be doing it going forward. See, basically. You but let me tell you one thing US categorically. Population. Let me tell you one thing categorically. We have said this that we will not be looking at services the way a normal services company does. We'll be only looking at end-to-end -end solutions being part of what we want to deliver. At no point of time do I want to have manpower supply being done to US or UK. It's when the whole project is coming to us with all the elements that we are good at, which is end-to-end. -end. Then only we are taking up those projects. So it is not that, you know, but we do hope the value will increase. But you have to first set your credentials to get those sort of projects. Ramping up and getting projects which are skill selling kind of a thing is easy. But when you're in the solution space, you have to set up your credentials, your credibility, prove yourself in the market and then do it. And it's not going to be the exact same process. It will grow, that's for sure. But not probably that why if ABC company is doing this and they're doing manpower supply, why are we not at that level? That will never be a comparable metric. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thanks for your answer. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashutosh Adora, individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, I, I can't Ashutosh, hear it very clearly. Please go ahead with the question. Your line is unmuted. And there is no response from the line. We'll move to the next question, which is from the line of Ashutosh Desai, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, sir, a few following questions from my side. Uh, you have mentioned uh, the 40% in your U.S. subsidy will be held by a partner. So that name is uh, finalized or just still, still kind of scouting for someone? No, 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 not at this stage. We will do it at the appropriate time, surely. Understood. Understood. But they, they are a more a technology company or more a, a startup ecosystem? So they are more of a startup ecosystem facilitator and okay. more of someone who has been a very successful entrepreneur. And we have worked with him over the last few years in terms of him being able to get us projects from his own ecosystem as well as from is uh, kind of you know affiliated ecosystem. So we are looking at this with the uh, part very, very clearly. And uh, mostly it's a relationship that we have fostered and we think it's ready to go to the next level. Opens up a new geography which we are otherwise not very sure of opening together. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. And uh, with, with the additional investment in first sense technology, what will be the uh, shareholding on a fully diluted basis? I know it's a convertible round, but still, if, if on a fully diluted basis, what kind of holding are we looking at for each? So on a fully convertible basis, uh, uh, we would be looking somewhere around about 31-32%. But this is subject to change depending on who else is participating with us, and that would obviously change some perspectives. Sure, sure. Larger the round, obviously, the number can be a little bit here or there, but broadly in this range, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. And, and last quarter, sir, you mentioned regarding Fortigo, I think starting to see some momentum. I'm, I'm sorry I missed out on the earlier part of the call, if, if you already briefed on that. But if you could help uh, if that momentum kind of continues and what, what do we see with that company? Because that company, I think we already hold for six, seven years now. So I just want to understand what's the traction on that. Vinny, do you have an update? Yeah, so Fortigo is continue to do whatever they are doing, and uh, they are pursuing very seriously with respect to the next level round, next level of funding. Uh, mm -hmm. Till the time they would like to uh, continue whatever they have been doing, but yes, as far as growth is concerned, growth is expected in Fortigo only from the next round of funding. Sure, and uh, are we evaluating exit options for us? If at all, they are looking at next round of, or I mean. Is it is it open from our side or would still like to wait for a while? No, we are open to it, but let let it first crystallize as to what sort of option they're going for, and then we will look at those strategies. Sure, sure. Uh, that's it from my side. Sir. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yashish from Marwari Chandrana Intermediaries Brokers Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. So, sir, uh, the first question that I have is regarding the valuation of startups. As I can see, uh, the value is absolutely similar to what the value was during last quarter. So, I just wanted to understand that how, what is the method of valuation that we are adapting? So, uh, as far as the valuation is concerned, we uh, report the fair value of the startup as on 31st March and as of 30th September. So that's the reason why when you look at uh, the uh, fair value of all our portfolio companies as on 30th June 2022 and as of 31st March 2022 would be similar. Because unless and until there is some next round of funding is happening or the business not doing well, we would like to keep it because the revaluation is done once in six months. Okay. Uh, and sir, the uh, next question that I had, do we have any update on signal analytics? I believe uh, we were told that before, I guess, two quarters that, uh, you know, uh, we'll be having some sort of presentation on the Zelt website about uh, what signal analytics does and anything. So any updates on that front? So basically, in case, if you look at our present investor deck, in that we have included a slide about signal analytics, what exactly it does. All right. So, so then at this point, is is that uh, all that we could be giving? Like, uh, we would like, as an investor, I would like no. to personally know that. What, no. Uh, what exactly the signal is going to do in terms of content space, subscription, gaming platform, robotics, how it is going to work out, we have presented it beautifully in a uh, diagram sort of a thing. If you still require any additional information, we are happy to uh, provide you the complete deck as well. Also, we updated the status at the first part of the call of having made our first uh, sort of partner organization through Signal, which was SoulTrack, the content company. And, uh, you know, it is just early days. We have just done that, but it's showing good promises, and some part of it we hopefully will be able to cover in uh, this quarter, so to say. But last quarter, some of these things are not declarable in that sense. All right. All right. So that's it from my end. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Radresh, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, I got a couple of questions. Uh, I see a rise in the uh, depreciation and amortization cost as well as on the finance cost. What's the reason behind that? So the reason behind that is, uh, we, uh, we, uh, as a part of expansion process, uh, we have taken a bigger space in Hyderabad, and Hyderabad is going to be a corporate office. And if you, even if you look at the number of people where it went up from 91 to 105, so this quarter we are still continue to ramp up people, and uh, because because of the larger office space, you have seen the expenses on the higher side, because increase in rental, increase in certain infrastructure sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and uh, I had see. Um, does the company has any plans to buy back its shares instead of uh, uh, buying shares of the startups? No, we don't have uh, a plan to buy back shares at the moment. Okay. Okay. The, that's it from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurabh, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm audible. Yes, Hello? Yes, you are. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah, most of all of my questions are already answered. I just have two questions. First, are we looking for further fund raise and more dilution in the near future? Sorry, uh, well, can you repeat your question? There was a bit of a cackle. Are we looking for more dilution in our share, not on the shop side, but uh, for the fundraising through presidential warrants or right CQ or something like that in the near future? We have never been, we have never been seeking it, but should an opportunity present itself, we'll obviously deliberate it at the board level and then uh, look at what would, obviously those things would have to go through a complete uh, buy-in from all stakeholders. As of now, we are not proactively looking at any such uh, overtures to be very frank. Okay. 
and my second question is that uh, now we are already in result mode already in 6 to 7 years since corporation so are we looking for some exit in our early startup which we have invested because as already mentioned by management that they look for the 6 to 7 years to be invested in the start and then look for exit correct so for early startups we may now start thinking depending on how their situation is and when the opportunity presents itself now that they have consolidated to some level of maturity yes we will be looking at that okay so we can expect some exit in this current period right time to look at new sort of things for our startup side so we are giving it the right timing to make sure that we do it at the right time and not get bound by a calendar to do it without looking at the environmental conditions okay and one of my suggestion this is my suggestion that uh, the in the direct feed did mention things in the format of the lack of growth because trading in the millions of thousands is very frustrating and we we have to recalculate that yeah so i i addressed this in my opening speech what happened was uh, even last uh, i think you raised this concern even in your last uh, for the earnings call as well we went back to our advisors but apparently there is some extract of schedule 3 of the company tax which gives the guidance how to present your numbers yes i agree your point because they have given like in case of the turnover or under crores how it should be, how, how the rounding has to happen and if it is less than 100 crores how the rounding has to happen they have given certain guidelines so we were following that that's the one of the reason why we could not change okay thank you mr my sir Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Ram Kumar R K, an individual investor. Please go ahead. This is a follow-up question. Sandeep, I recollect you told about uh, some robotic something you plan to have. Is there any status update on that? Can can you repeat your question? Sorry, this is robotics. Uh, there was some plan to have something on robotics, right? Yes. So that's one of the fourth plank of the signal process, and as it's the most mature thing, it will also come last. We'll start with content. We will do subscription and gaming probably more or less simultaneously, but go to market subscription will be first, and then obviously gaming would happen. Post that is when we will look at the robotic part, but obviously. a lot of stealth work and research and all will start probably 6 uh, 7 months down the line okay so uh, the next question which is yeah, how i'm asking i'm sorry uh, the next question i'm asking is out of ignorance the esop rate what is fixed by the management is it based on some calculation or is it based on is there any empirical formula you are utilizing to arrive at 19 rupee per share for the options to be given or is there any randomly number is chosen no it's not the question of randomly number of so uh, thought basically it all depends upon the at what stage an employee is joining us and what is the commitment given at that particular point of time uh, based on that for example in case if you look at it there are few people who are there in the ecosystem for last 6 years last 7 years so based on their tenure in the organization when during which part of the journey they have joined the uh, ease of pricing has been derived Uh, so seeing as you should you should also read, see that there are investors who are adding stocks at the current market price that is when the march 2021 the price was around 300 plus in the market price and this news of 19 rupee per option this you know will negatively impact the existing holders who have you know shelled and entered at much later stage so please uh, if if in the future when you issue the shares i thank you also take this also into consideration To, to to make the prices as close to the market rate as possible yeah so basically these grants were not issued now basically they have exercise now these grants were issued earlier yeah, in march 2021 right it was issued in march 2021 yeah march 2021 but this was approved uh, prior to that because these guys have joined somewhere in 2017 16 to 17 okay i see so you need to tell that this is already being you know issued um, before the P- ipo before the ipo was 
you know, exercise. Before, before the IPO, when they were joining, where the commitment were given. I see, I see. Got it, got it. Okay, okay. It's fine. It's clear. It's clear. It's fine. All right. So, okay, sir. It's all clear. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek from Gems Quest as asset. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, I just have one qualitative question. Uh, now, with respect to our business, uh, the way the things are shaping up in the global arena, uh, what kind of greener pastures or, you know, new kind of uh, hanging, low-hanging fruits that we see or, you know, uh, the kind of opportunities that we see and then we would like to capitalize on them? So, uh, your comment and anything on that front would be helpful? So that's a very good question, actually. See, the thing is, it's a, well, I would say that there are three factors which we think has gone in our favor. One is that the kind of esoteric uh, services that we were doing for the overseas market has kind of given us something like a shadow practice, right? We did technologies ahead of time of their arrival in India. That has been one tailwind that we obviously will have to capitalize on. So when people are looking for similar solutions in India, or when overseas companies are coming here looking for similar standards, we stand in good stead to convert those opportunities. And we are seeing uh, a recurrence of those inquiries. The second is that focus on a particular segment in India, which was the next 500 million India, has sort of made us like the grammaticians of understanding the culture code of that uh, particular uh, class of people, irrespective of the solution. So more and more people and a little more mature startups are also looking at, up to us and saying, uh, can you help us with this part of tech, which is more or less incoming requests and we are still fathoming how to effectively you know, look at that. Some of the very big ones, we are very clear, there is no equity play there. We are treating it as service and getting some services. But in some of the mid-sized ones, we are trying to see what's the right model for us to fit in. These are not like what we're used to, like coming in at the early stages that are there. So the new maturity is coming, that's the second part of it. The third is that many of the things that we think we have developed in India or has been developed in India and we have been using it as framework, as experience and all, are hugely transportable, not pitchforkable, but transportable uh, to, let's say, interesting growth engines and places like Africa. That is surely something where we see a lot of future growth. And when I say future, I'm not saying distant future, but in the near future, growth happens. So these three things will surely, uh, you know, kind of allow us to play a growth, growth role uh, given the current environment in, 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 in question. Awesome. Does that answer awesome. your question? Yes, sir. Awesome. I mean, I mean, not many will appreciate this, but then. Uh, the kind of business and the kind of opportunities that we can cater to and we are looking for, I guess, uh, will show itself uh, in a matter of, I guess, a year or two. Uh, is that uh, correct? Sir? I, I also guess so. I also yeah, guess. thanks. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Also, also think so because, see, the thing is, we are going for the middle of the pyramid and we think there will be the right bridge between the bottom of the pyramid and the top of the pyramid. The top of yes. the pyramid is overserved. Bottom of the pyramid, giving them the ability to compute and do something productive is everything that we are doing, correct? So it does yes. stand in good stead that it will, it will help into a large change over time. Yes, sir. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. would like to keep the investors, analysts, and everybody uh, informed well in advance that going forward, we would like to have the early calls once in six months. That is, after closure of uh, half yearly, which is September 30th, and annual account, which is 31st of March, but we will always be available to answer your queries and uh, meetings for the investors as and when they require. As we said, that we are aiming to be adjusted EBITDA level profitable by Q4 uh, FY23. We are looking at working towards it. 
With that, now I thank you everyone for joining us. In case if you have any further queries, please do reach out to us. We will do our best to respond the same. And that's it from our side. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. On behalf of Zelfmark Design and Technologies Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>